Hi friends! Today we're going to go over my backlist priorities for 2021. <laughs> off this video should have actually been the first video that you've seen in 2021. I asked my patrons over on Patreon what video they wanted to see first for the year and this was the one that was voted on and somehow in the editing process I completely ruined all of my footage and so I had to pull all the books down again and refilm and I've been working on my stats video and that took like three days to edit and it's been a hot mess so I apologize but it's here now, we're gonna get to it, and we're gonna talk about the books that I wanna get to in 2021 that are the priorities of the backlist that I have currently on my shelves. First, we're gonna go over books from 2020 that were on 2020's backlist priority list that didn't get read. So, uh, a spoiler alert for the 2020 book list. Uh, I have a couple from that list that I didn't get to, but I still want to. So let's go over those three first because you've seen me talk about them before. The first is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is a retelling of The Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland. I don't like Alice in Wonderland. I'm like one of the few people on the planet that don't. That's totally fine. It's not my jam but I like Marissa Meyer and I really liked what she did with the Lunar Chronicles as far as retellings go so I wanted to give this one a try and I really do really need to prioritize it this year as I should have last year but did not. Also if you can't tell from this mess behind me it has been a hot mess of filming end of year videos but I'm sure you're all familiar with that at this point. Next is Not Now Not Ever by Lily Anderson. This is I this might be Lily's first book. I'm not sure. It may be her debut. It may be the second book that came out. Either way I've read a couple of her books. I've really enjoyed them. This one I've been meaning to get to but I haven't. This one follows a girl who is kind of wanting to go outside of the idea of what her parents have for her as far as her future and she goes to the summer camp and tries to reinvent herself. The issue is that her cousin who is like this goody two-shoes of the family is also there and the cousin is wanting to out her and tell everyone who she really is and so it's kind of her trying to figure out how she can be someone else while also being herself. I think. And then Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. Again, I intended to get to this in October. I was saving it for the spooky month. I know how much I suck at doing that, but I did read like 17 books in October. So the fact that I just didn't quite get to this one is okay. Um, I was saving it for October. I didn't get to it. Should I save it for this October? Should I read it prior? I don't know, but I do want to get to this one. I feel like I don't really need to tell you guys what it's about because if you've been on booktube, you know a lot about this book. Kind of deals with um, the fucked up shit that privileged people will do to people who are not quite so privileged, I think. This next group is books that were published prior to 2020 that I've had on my shelves for a few years that I really just want to get to. Um, the first of which is My New Crush Gave to Me by Shani Petroff. I actually have already read this one as of filming this so I don't like when I filmed it the first time I hadn't read it uh, but now I have. So I actually have a wrap-up for this already. I decided to be kind to myself and not take it out and and add another book in. This book follows Charlie who is a high school junior and she has a crush on a high school senior who is like this football star and she writes for the newspaper and is very kind of highly type A and she is trying to get the attention of this senior and she thinks that they would be perfect for each other because he's very type A as well and she wants to get him the perfect present in this gift exchange, the secret Santa, but she doesn't know enough about him to be able to do that so she enlists his cousin JD to help her kind of pick these perfect gifts for him and in the process starts to fall for JD instead. It was a really good book. So. Then have The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. I'm gonna be honest I really don't even anymore know what this book's about. I bought it quite a while ago and I honestly bought it because it reminds me of like the daughter of Xena from Xena Warrior Princess. Like just the look of her and like the it just it reminds me of that and so that's honestly why I bought it. We then have The Devouring Grape by Christine Lynn Herman. I actually read the first chapter of this during one of my try a chapter reads last year and I really enjoyed it and I don't know why I never picked it up again as the year had went on. Um, I, I really need to rework the way that I prioritize the things that I read because I'm prioritizing things for book clubs and they're not books that I own so I need to prioritize the books that I own over book club books. <sighs> Did I realize that after I filmed my January TBR and had like 12 books on it and only owned three of them? Yes, yes I did. So I really need to prioritize some of these books that I have already in my possession. This is one of them. I know that this book follows a girl that moves to a town where they have like this devouring gray that is kind of like a 
demony thing that takes over people that live there. I don't really know for sure. Um, I, like I said, I read the first chapter and I enjoyed it and I just need to get to it. Next is Shades of Darkness by A.R. Kaler. I don't know a whole lot about this one either other than it is uh, by A.R. Kaler who wrote the Pale Queen Rising series, which I really enjoyed. It's also Alex R. Kaler um, who has wrote some other traditionally published novels. I believe this is one of his traditionally published as well. He's also done um, some self-published. So I know the series follows like a boarding school and something to do with like someone raising a demon. That's pretty much all I really needed to know, but also all that I do know. And I also own the sequel to this as well, but I would like to at least get to this first one. Also a book that I was saving for the spooky month and never got to, but I read 16 books that month. So I did good, right? Okay, let's move on. A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. I just started reading this series last year, so I don't feel too bad about this one actually, because um, I just finished the second book in like November. So I want to get to this series. I'm really enjoying it. This series follows Laia, who is part of this race of people who are essentially slaves in this empire that she lives in. She lives with her grandparents and her brother because her parents were killed by the empire. At the very beginning of the book, it shows her brother being taken by the empire and she in order to try to rescue her brother, goes to the rebellion that are trying to overtake the empire and offers her services to them in order for, in return for them saving her brother. And it puts her in the household of the leader of the military or the masks of this society. And basically she is a slave to her and it follows her and then Elias who is one of the masks and just basically talks a lot about what monsters truly are. Are humans the monsters or are monsters the monsters? Um, discusses, you know, differences in race and why certain people are thought of a certain way and just really goes over a lot of topics. I've really enjoyed the first book. The second book, not as much. I think it was a little lacking in plot, but I definitely want to pick up the third book and subsequently the fourth book, which came out in December, um, hopefully this year, but we will see what happens. And then the last of the books that came out prior to 2020, we have Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. This is the second Marissa Meyer book in this video. Um, I really, really, really loved Renegades. I read Renegades last year in like January, February, not sure. And I wanted to read Arch Enemies and I don't know why I didn't get to it last year. Again, probably because I prioritized things for book clubs rather than books that I own. And I really need to stop doing that. This is me telling you I'm going to stop doing that. Okay, cool. Let's move on. So Arch Enemies, want to read it. The series follows Nova, who is basically an anarchist, which is a group of super powered humans who are uh, they basically took over the world at this point and the renegades came in and kind of stopped that from happening and renegades have taken over and they kind of rule the planet. I believe it's the entire planet. And this series follows Nova trying to figure out who the bad guys really are, who the good guys really are, um, what makes the good guys good, what makes the bad guys bad. Kind of that whole scenario of good versus evil, who's actually evil, kind of thing that I really enjoy. Um, I also love the takedown of any society because that is fun to read. So I really love the first book, need to read the second book. And the last group of books that we're going to talk about are all 2020 releases that I just didn't get to and I want to. First on this group is going to be Star Daughter by Shwita Takrar. This book follows Sheetal who is a girl who is born both of a human and of a star and she kind of has to keep that secret and at some point in her adolescence and her after puberty she actually injures her father and the only way to heal something that a partial star person has done is to be healed by an actual star and so she goes to wherever it is that her mother is from and tries to find her mother to heal her father and ends up in this tournament of sorts I think Again, I don't, I haven't read these, so I'm horrible at descriptions on books I haven't read yet. You know that. Um, Shwita is super kind, super nice. I really enjoyed her um, during the Social Distance Book Fest this year. And so I wanted to support her, wanted to buy this book. Why haven't I read it yet? I don't know. It's this gorgeous Owlcrate edition. It's purple. It's just, I love it so much and I need to read it. Next is actually my current read and that is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I am 49% into this book and I am fucking loving it. This book follows Brie who is right at the start of the book we learned that her mother has died in this accident and she is 16 but is in this college program so she gets to go to college um, for her final two years uh, of high school rather than going to high school and she and her best friend go there and she ends up in this secret society of sorts that kind of emulates the Knights of the Round Table and she learns that there is something to do 
with the Knights of the Round Table and her mother's death and so she tries to infiltrate this group of people in order to figure out what happened to her mother. Um, really enjoying this so far but definitely want to finish it before the end of the year. We then have The Lost Book of the White by Cassie Clare. This is the second book in the Eldest Curses series which follows Magnus and Alec um, during different times of their life. The first book follows them between the third and fourth book in The Mortal Instruments and I think this one takes place after The Mortal Instruments. Not really sure about that but I, I'm a total Malik stan so I have to read this. Next is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I've also already read this one since I have filmed this the first time. This book follows Felix who is queer, black, and transgender and he feels like that is too many identifiers that are other that make him unlovable and his last name is Love and he feels like it's very ironic. And the book follows him trying to figure out what kind of love he deserves, what kind of relationships he wants to have, who he is. As I said when I hauled this book the thing that really sold me on it is this last paragraph that says Felix Ever After is an honest and layered story about identity, falling in love, and recognizing the love you deserve. And I definitely think the book was that and I loved it and I will be talking about it more in my January wrap-up. The next book is Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. This book follows a girl who lives in a world where the only way they're able to get water is this spirit that gives them water by making a blood sacrifice. So there's always a woman who is sacrificed and she is kind of marked and known to be the sacrifice. And so our main character, she gets the mark, but she in being taken by the spirit she accidentally kills the spirit and then she has to go beyond the veil in order to get blood to her people blood to her people? Probably water to her people. Probably not blood. Probably. Next is A Song of Wraiths and Ruins by Rosanna Brown. This again was someone that was one of our authors for the Social Distance Book Fest whom I thought was just the absolute sweetest and I wanted to read her work. Haven't made it quite that far yet because I'm a horrible human. Uh, this book follows Malik? Malik and Karina. This book follows Malik who is taking his younger sisters into a new city trying to avoid the war where they were previously so that his sisters can have a good life and upon entering the city this force takes his youngest sister and basically tells him that the only way that he'll get his youngest sister back is if he kills the crown princess Karina. And Karina is trying to figure out the whole world in her royal life because there's a whole bunch of shit going on there and basically she's trying to resurrect her mother and the being that can resurrect her mother says if you bring me the beating heart of a king then I will resurrect your mother. So basically her way to get through that is to have a tournament and offer her hand in marriage to a man who she can then kill and give her his heart to this thing to raise his mom but Malik's idea is to marry Karina so that he can kill her and get his sister back. There's a whole bunch of things going on it sounds like it's gonna be awesome basically is where I'm going with that. We then have Horrid by Katrina Leno. This is also an Owlcrate book and I keep meaning to flip this and I haven't yet so I'm gonna do it right now while we talk about the book. This book follows Jane who upon the death of her father she and her mother go back to her mother's hometown and have to live in the house that her mom grew up in. And the house has always been kind of like the creepy haunted house of their town and people think it's really weird that she lives there. And I'm literally doing this while I'm talking to you, which is why it's so loud. And the book is just about us, the reader, trying to figure out what's going on in the house, why people think it's haunted, is it actually haunted, what's going on with that? Um, and we just have to figure out, uh, you know, what happens inside the house. Again, this is one that I saved for October and then October kind of got away from me. I read a bunch of books in October, but didn't necessarily get to everything that I wanted to get to and that's okay. Haha. -ha. The next book is The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow. This book follows a young girl named Ellie and Ellie is living in a world where uh, we have been taken over by aliens and they're kind of robot -y. I don't really know uh, for sure. But basically the world has been invaded by these aliens and art, books, music, everything is illegal and Ellie kind of has the secret library that she keeps um, knowing that if it is found that she will be executed. And one of Ellie's books goes missing and she kind of starts freaking out. And then we have the alien Morris who is supposed to not feel things but really finds human music very entertaining and very moving. And so these two kind of come together to save the world in a way. 
somehow or another. We then have Chosen by Kirsten White. This is the second book in the Slayer series. These are part of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer world. I really enjoyed the first book. Um, technically with Kirsten I either love or hate her books. I've DNF'd some, I've loved some, so it just is either here or there. Um, but I really enjoyed the first book Slayer and I'm hoping to get to this one soon as well. Also a sequel Aurora Burning by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is the sequel to Aurora Rising that came out in 2019 that I read and really enjoyed. The series follows Aurora who wakes up 200 years or is it 2000 years? It's a really long time after she was supposed to. She was put into a cryogenic sleep and sent to another planet and somehow in the transfer her shuttle basically everyone was dead and she was still stuck in a cryogenic sleep and she is discovered by this group of people who are um they basically have their own pilot and they work for a pilot force like a part of the military kind of sort of let's go with that um and basically um these kids go out on this journey and basically they're the whole hope for humanity at some point so uh, really enjoyed the first book want to get to this one as well and the final book on the list is the last book that i purchased in 2020 and that is instant karma by marissa meyer uh the third book by marissa meyer on this list i was really interested in this i've heard a lot of negative things since it's come out i know that it follows a girl named prue who has the power to make people live through their cosmic karma um so it's got like a little bit of a magical element to the to the contemporary aspect of it um but I've heard that she's a really horrible character. So interested to see how the story goes because again, I've loved Marissa Meyer in the past. So don't know where this is gonna go, but interested to read it. All right, y'all, those are the books that I wanna read in 2021. They are the ones that I'm gonna prioritize. They are the ones that I want to get to the most. There are also some other books that I wanna get to that are, like I have whole series, like a completed series. So I have a list of series that I wanna, I, how many times can I say series? Take a shot every time I say series, uh, but don't cause you'll die. So I have a list of all of the series that I own that I have all of the books from, and um, that everything is published and I have them all. And those I wanna finish also but those are not part of this. Separate things. I have a lot of things to read this year, y'all. If you own any of these books and you would like to buddy read any of them, let me know in the comments below. If you've read any of these and you know which ones I should prioritize of this group of 20, let me know in the comments below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week, so if you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below, and until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! Ooh, 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 ooh.